Welcome to Truth and Grace with John and Mark. In this podcast, we tackle difficult issues related to living, loving, and leading in a broken world. We hope you are encouraged by today's episode. Welcome back to Truth and Grace with John and Mark. Today's an interesting episode because it's Mark without John. Instead, (laughs) I've got two great guests with me today, Evan Wilkerson. Uh, You might know that name uh, with World Challenge. David Wilkerson, the founder of the organization. Gary Wilkerson, the president. And... um, Evan's a gifted minister in his own right, got a great heritage, but he's also leads our next gen ministry and does a great job. Welcome. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for having me. Happy to have you here. And then we've got Brittany Riles. Brittany serves on the missions team. She does a great job at her job, and she's traveled all around the world, especially working with women in various places. So welcome, Brittany. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for having me. It's always a joy. Today's conversation is a carryover from our previous episodes on spiritual disciplines. And today we're talking about spiritual disciplines for the undisciplined. Mm. Now, I want to make it clear right up front a couple of things. One, it's really nice to have younger people on the podcast Mm -hmm. because Everybody knows who's ever listened to this podcast that John is older than me. <laughs> and it's only three months, but I make oh. the most of those three months. Yeah, I'm always should. dogging him about being an old man <laughs> that, you know, he's always going to be older than me. So today I am really excited about having younger people on the podcast. So, you know, I also want to make it clear that when we talk about spiritual disciplines for the undisciplined, I didn't ask you to come here because I think of one generation being undisciplined and the other ones being disciplined. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. You know, so that, <laughs> no, it's, this is not a beat up on younger generation. I am not that guy. Um, yeah. As a matter of fact, I just really, really believe in younger people mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. want to trust and inspire them and mm-hmm. trust in and then inspire them to do I, to do more, Yeah, you know, to be more. Mm-hmm. And so today we just want to talk about this whole idea of spiritual disciplines. We're going to have a conversation. We always talk about having a, an atmosphere around this table that it kind of welcomes somebody else to be like a silent member of the conversation. And so um, mm-hmm. today we've not our, our conversations are never highly scripted because that's not the nature of conversations. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, I want to start, though, by reading a <clears throat> quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson. Um He said, sow a thought and reap an action, sow an action and reap a habit, sow a habit and reap a character, sow a character and reap a destiny. Hmm. For me, that really resonates as as it relates to the whole idea of spiritual disciplines. Mm -hmm. Uh, Evan, kind of give us an insight into like maybe your your pilgrimage with the whole idea of spiritual disciplines. Yeah. Yeah. You mean like within my family? No, or no, just you personally. In my own yeah, personal journey of yeah. A well, I mean, I can't. Discipline. I can only imagine. But you know, your your granddad was known as a rather rather intense person. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. he talked a just lot a about bit. prayer, <laughs> mm-hmm. and you know, one of his most you know powerful sermons was this one about agonizing in prayer. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, that's a pretty high standard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. See if we can get there. Yeah. Tough well, honestly, there. Um, so, just on that note, that I think there, for my own pilgrimage of spiritual disciplines, there has been a tendency just to. Look at my dad and how he's done it, or mm. look at my grandpa and how he's done it. Mm. Um, and I've heard like on um, other podcasts of like, look at how David Wilkerson prayed for three hours, and then they kind of jokingly said like, yeah, he can make anyone feel guilty about their <laughs> prayer life. And it's like just this idea of um, you know people have different uh, different callings and uh, different disciplines, so it's not exactly meant for every Christian. It's just, it varies from your gifting and your calling right. and, and what God um, hands to you. Some people and, seem to have the gift of intercession. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. But we're all, we're all called, called to, to pray. pray. We're all yeah. called to different yeah. mm-hmm. spiritual disciplines. Um, some people just might do it more for, for them because that's what works. And so for my grandfather, it works to start praying at 12 a.m., 
for two hours and or three hours, and and that's what he needed, and that's mm-hmm. what he um, desired. Um, so, in my own life, I've noticed a tendency to just try to mimic spiritual giants in my life, but that's always collapsed under mm. a weight of of law and realizing I cannot maintain somebody else's spiritual discipline. God has mm. uniquely wired me in a way where mm. um, I can learn from others, but I need to do what fits for me. And so um, prayer, especially prayer, is something that I, I really enjoy and, and desire, mm. um, but I can't always have it. And that's where the discipline comes in, right? So I know you've talked about... Mm. Yeah, that you know, one of my favorite kind of just way of unpacking this for my own life and then when I talk about it with others is to talk about that discipline mm. is the bridge between duty and delight. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, because like we all want to live in the area of sp- spiritual disciplines in delight. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the truth is on this side of eternity, I don't think we ever will. Mm. We ex- we can experience delight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There are certainly times in our, in meditation and prayer in fasting in Bible reading in simplicity of living in all these things and mm-hmm. giving all of these are spiritual disciplines mm-hmm. that I find delight. But sometimes I just know I need to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, the Bible tells us we're supposed to pray without ceasing, but for, in my own life, I've discovered if I don't pray, specifically at a certain time, I won't pray all the time. Yeah. yeah. Like mm-hmm. I have to have an anchor mm-hmm. somewhere. You have to schedule it. You it, have exactly. to carve it out mm-hmm. of your time. And then yeah. that's where the discipline comes in and you can be committed to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, my mother was, my grandmother was, didn't pray quite like your father, but I, I, we've talked about this podcast several times that a lot of people at World Challenge come from a background of, <laughs> a bit of a more legalistic sure bent yeah. uh, and you know and have grown in grace mm-hmm. and you know my grandmother was a a prayer warrior i mean you know when she died she still had this long list of people she prayed for every single mm-hmm. day yeah. and she literally set an alarm clock <laughs> like an old wind up <laughs> alarm <Wow>. clock <laughs> and and she would not leave her prayer room until that alarm clock went off mm-hmm. wow you know and so that was a great example for me. On the flip side of that, it was probably certainly more duty mm-hmm. than delight. Yeah. You know, so sure. Brittany, help us kind of the same question to you. Yeah. So I grew up in church. So fasting, tithing, prayer, those are things that we just we just did. Right. You know, I didn't really know the reason. I just kind of did it. And then when I got older or m- maybe when I was like a teenager, I went to a youth conference and I just saw I was like, man, I saw this girl praying on stage and I was like, I want to pray like her. Mm-hmm. So I so I was really passionate about it. You know, I'm a passionate person. And then a few weeks after the youth conference, I was like, I didn't have that same feeling of Mm. spiritual, a spiritual high, spiritual excitement. And I was like, okay, that was kind of when it struck me that this is like an everyday thing. This is an Mm. everyday um, choice to pursue Mm. that. And I think of like a marathon, running a marathon. Mm. I'm like, okay. I'm like so passionate about running a marathon. I'm going to, I'm going to tell my friends, I'm going to get super excited. I'm going to, I'm going to like you know, just tell everyone about it. But then if I don't make the choice to run every day or have a a strategic plan to get to the marathon, then that's not going to go well for me. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to get to, I'm going to get to the marathon and be like, well, my passion didn't take me very far. Like my passion (laughs) only took me so far before my body just couldn't do it anymore. Um, So I think of it similarly in prayer um, Mm. or in spiritual discipline, the more you do it, when you get to those like trials in your life or when you get to a moment where you're like just at a low, like you have that to lean on. You have those spiritual disciplines that you've set in your life to lean on. And also with running, it's like, you know, no one likes running the first time they do it. It's hmm. like, oh, man, this is terrible. Even running like five minutes. If I haven't ran for a while, running five minutes is like, it's tough. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. But eventually, the more I run, the more I get to love it. The more I, I love the feeling 
Mm-hmm. I've never gotten to that place before. <laughs> <laughs> you, maybe so maybe that, you're, right, you're right. Maybe that's just me, but that's just an example <laughs> with running. And you could put that to anything, you know, like if you're working towards something, like if you don't have the discipline to follow it up, it's like you're talking about duty to delight. Yeah. You have to set that discipline in place. And maybe at first it does feel a little bit like rigid and forced I guess but then eventually you get to the place where you're like man I love spending time doing this and I'm also a really busy person my mind's busy all the time like Mm -hmm. I'm just always running doing something so the hardest part for me in spiritual discipline is taking time aside to just meditate and pray Mm -hmm. just to stop stop all the noise in my life it just it feels like oh, I could be doing this, I could be doing this, but at the end of the day, I have to look at it and realize, no, this is more important than anything else I do in my life. This sets me up for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Are you a morning person or a night person? You know, I used to say I was a night owl, but now I'm definitely a morning person. I recently have started getting up and working out first thing in the morning. And I used to think those people were crazy. I was like, I will never be that person. And now I am that person. (laughs) What about you, Evan? I'm more of a morning person now. I'm the same way as Brittany. I'd stay up till 12, 1, even 3 in the morning and uh, sleep in late. Or, you know, I'd have church the next morning. So I'd get like four hours of sleep, go to church, <laughs> do two services, go home and nap. Now I'm a morning person. I've I've found that that works much better for my health, my sanity, and my spiritual disciplines yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. So I've usually carved out a time in the morning to pray or, or read the Bible. I like to read first and then, you know. All right. So I, I, if it's all right, I'm just yeah, going to go dig down it. in the deep weeds here. Yeah. So sh- tell me what that looks like, specifically like your time in God's Word, in yeah. your prayer time. Yeah. So get up um, and then. Just, Start with coffee. Of course. Coffee <laughs> first. <laughs> And then um, Jesus is always better with coffee. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that is true. I found that to be true. Um, yeah. So I, I, I get the coffee and I get my Bible and then I I try to I used to try to read like two chapters in the Old Testament and then kind of work my way to the New Testament. So I do like uh, two chapters in First Kings, Psalms and then the New Testament. Mm-hmm. But I found sometimes at 6 a.m. the New Testament can be pretty hard to get through like it it doesn't stick or you're just you're kind of trailing off or the new testament the old testament the oh, old okay. testament yeah, oh, i was oh, like okay. i think the new testament's pretty oh yeah did i say new? <laughs> yeah it's I all mean, right the old. yeah I'm a, if i'm reading first kings or if i'm reading oh yeah sure the genealogy i'm like I, <laughs> i'm trailing off i'm going back to sleep here and so i save the old testament for later parts of the day i don't know if this will help you but years ago i had a, a close friend who was kind of a spiritual role model for me who gave me permission to kind of like skip the genealogies okay, and all that. And, and this is how he said it. He said, all of the Bible is equally inspired, but not all is equally important. Mm. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I, all of a sudden, that's like, yes, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, like, I, I yeah. So, you know, just yeah. so from now on, you have permission, <laughs> unless you're doing a Bible study on the genealogies of whatever you can skip and say Mark said and then you know, right right you what's know, what's so. more important where you know these fathers where Joseph came from or that the veil of the temple was <laughs> torn yeah. and exactly these two, yeah. you know there yeah. are more sure Just significant spend, parts spend all of it's all of it's inspired so yeah, yeah so I, I I've now tend to go to the Psalms first that's mm. that's a great way for me to start my devotion um actually the last months, uh, maybe even a year, have just been stuck from Psalm 24 to like 34. Just Mm. those Psalms right there have been uh, speaking volumes to me. So wonderful. And and I want to meditate on Mm. those things. I've noticed if I just read a couple chapters and then move on to the next thing, you know, by breakfast, I I forgot what I read or I don't think about it. It's it's Mm -hmm. nice to just sit and pause, a Lectio Divina Uh type of devotion Mm -hmm. and really meditate on what it's saying and let it sink in. You know, I I love the fact that you're even talking about meditation because, you know, and Christians tend to 
oftentimes kind of shun the idea of meditation, especially more of the like evangelical branch of Christianity, you know, because Mm -hmm. clearly there's some stuff with Eastern meditation and Eastern Mm -hmm. mysticism Mm -hmm. that that's not what we're talking about. Right. Yeah. You know, so, you know, the whole idea of like in the Eastern religions is to empty our minds of all thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Christian meditation, it's just the opposite. It's to fill our minds. Yeah. But put riverbanks. Mm. We're not letting other stuff in. We're just meditating on whether it's God's character or some passage of scripture or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I meditate on the law day and night. night. And and in this Christian perspective, all the instruction of the word is how we would apply yeah. you know, Psalm one. Um and then I go into prayer and uh I find it I find it harder to start that process of prayer if I've just been sitting there with the Bible. But mm-hmm. Every time I'm, I get into the flow of prayer, I don't want to stop. Mm-hmm. You know, like once you get going, I just want to keep pouring out my heart to God. I want to keep listening to what he has to say to me mm-hmm. in that time. And I always wish that I had made more, more time. But, yeah. you know, he understands we're human. We have schedules. And, and so there is a grace there to yeah. say, okay. Uh, amen. I yeah. <laughs> got to get into my and work And that doesn't now. have to be the end of your prayer for the day. Yeah. You know, I, I love the idea of conversational prayer. Mm. Whereas even as I'm write, writing down the road or whatever, I'm mm. just, my thoughts, you know, I, my anxious thoughts tend to turn toward God. Mm. You know, when, when I'm unhealthy, my anxious thoughts stay in my head and they become that hamster wheel. Mm. Yeah. You know, where I'm just, over I'm ruminating over, over these same yeah. things over and over again and they never get better. It's a vicious cycle. <laughs> yes, it actually is. Mm. But... But when I turn my anxious thoughts to prayer, you know, the hamster gets off the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> it <laughs> takes you know? a break. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, and, you know, because all of a sudden I'm inviting God into the concerns of my heart. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where the, you know, the peace of God that passes all understanding mm-hmm. can be ours in Christ. Right. Yeah. yeah. Let your request be made known. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Brittany, that's help good. us understand, kind of give us an insight into your spiritual, <laughs> your disciplines and how those look. Yeah. So um, in the morning, I I love to work out first thing and I put on worship music on my way just to kind of, you know, set my mind. But then I feel like I'm actually awake to be able to Mm -hmm. to do my quiet time, because if I just got up and just went straight to the Bible, I would I would struggle. (laughs) So (laughs) so but when I start my my quiet time, as some mm-hmm. call it. Um, I like to start with the the meditation part, the prayer part, just mm-hmm. so I can clear my mind so that we're, whenever I wake up, I feel like the enemy just tries to bring in anxious thoughts immediately, you mm-hmm. know, bring in things that mm-hmm. like you're, you need to do this and like just kind of stress my mind out. And I'm like, no, I'm going to stop that right now mm-hmm. because I feel like if that's not like if you're not consciously Turning your thoughts, like you said, Mark, towards the Lord, turning those anxious thoughts towards the Lord, like it could just continue to ruminate all day. Yeah. And so for myself, I found it helpful to just, you know, sit. And I set a timer sometimes because if I don't set a timer, then I'll go for like maybe two minutes and then I'm like, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> but I need to actually force myself to take that time because, you know, like sometimes it takes two minutes for the Lord to speak. Sometimes in those like by the nine minutes and 30 seconds, it's like, oh. Mm-hmm. Like I got this like really cool revelation from the Lord mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. Um, and then I do, I, I used to, it depends on the season, I think, um, for what I do when I read the Bible, but currently I'm going through Esther and just doing like a very in-depth mm. contextual study of Esther. And it's been nice. so interesting and so life-giving. And I just, I don't put any pressure on myself to read. I have to read two chapters or I have to read this much. Like if I just spend an like 20, 30 minutes on one paragraph and I'm still learning from it, I think that that's okay to me. (laughs) Sure. Yeah, that's great. I don't think there's, I think the beautiful thing here is I don't think there's a right way and a wrong way. It's about prioritization. Mm -hmm. You know, Simon Sinek is a secular writer, but has a lot of good things to say. And he talks about the uh, importance of (laughs) consistency over Mm -hmm. intensity. Mm -hmm. And I always think of that as it relates to maybe as I I can see both sides Mm -hmm. of it now in my early days when I knew I needed to pray and knew knew I needed to read my Bible and I would feel guilty 
because mm-hmm. I hadn't, mm. that when I would go to it, it would be like, okay, I'm going to pray for three hours and yeah. you know, I'm going to read, you know, you know, this. And, and of course that can only generally last for so long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then of course, when you don't keep the, the intensity, then you feel guilty. Mm-hmm. And then of course, when you feel guilty, you know, there's something about spiritual disciplines. They're, they're like walking into the room with God. Mm-hmm. If we feel guilty before God, how many of us want to walk into the room? Right. Right. We don't even want to show up. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, it's like if you've had a, if you know you've disappointed somebody mm-hmm. in your own life, you 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 all you will almost always try to avoid that person. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like a dog with your tail between your legs. Yeah, kind exactly. Of scared <laughs> yeah. and someone in college. I remember talking to one of my mentors, and I was like, I just haven't had time to really go into the word that deep. I've just been reading like a psalm a day or something. And she's like, Brittany, you don't have to play catch up with God. Like mm-hmm. when you haven't spent like like you said, like you I, you didn't pray yesterday. You don't have to make up for it. The Lord's like. He's still there. He still wants you to come into the room. Right. Mm-hmm. He's still inviting you just as you are. And I think that shame and guilt that we walk in with can hinder us sometimes, you know, unless oh, we absolutely. just lay that at his feet mm-hmm. first thing. And that's why I like to start with the the meditation mm-hmm. or the, the just the prayer, mm-hmm. the silence to start out, because then I can just, you know, lay it at his feet. And there's, I used to think there was a pressure. You had to read this many chapters. You had to journal right. this much. I, it was very rigid. Right. But I've just found so much freedom mm-hmm. in depth in, you know, spending, you know, 30 minutes on a paragraph, then journaling, then praying, you know, switching it up. It doesn't have to be this rigid set of things that you do as long as that time is intentional for is yeah. for the Lord. Yeah. And like you said as well, like our prayers continue throughout the day. Like mm-hmm. yeah. if we miss a quiet time in the morning, we have an early morning flight. We slept in, you know, we have to go to work. Like we can, we pray throughout the day. God's always there. He's not just there from six thirty to seven thirty in the mornings. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm going to be, does, does this count? <laughs> so how many of you use of the two of you mm-hmm. who uses you version? I do. Yeah. You use you version in, you use? In general or? In general. Sometimes. Do you ever use the audio feature on you version? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Does it count? <laughs> yeah. Of course it I does. So. I'm being yeah. silly here. Yeah. Of course it counts. <laughs> yeah. No, Evan, it doesn't count. Get back to reading. Yeah, I did. If it's not paper, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't count. Yeah, I did. And you don't have a highlighter in your hand or it, a Right, and your coffee and your music and your setup. Well, uh, a couple of years ago, I did. I was reading the Bible in a year and getting through numbers. I was like, oof, <laughs> this, this is tough. tough. I think I listened to almost all of it on audio because yeah. I would just like doze off. Even if it was the middle of the day, I'd had my coffee, I had eaten, I was fine. It was just a long book. Yep. That's why Most people can make it through desk. Genesis. Mm-hmm. They make it through Exodus 20. Yeah. And that's where the loss starts. And yeah. it's like from there on until you get to the end of Deuteronomy, it's like downhill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like take the blood like, on the uh, earlobe and the big toe. I'm like, what? <laughs> What's going um, on? I work with a, a lot of teenagers. And yeah. one of their complaints is that it's just been so hard for them to read the Bible, read through the Bible. Mm. And I'm telling them to make it as easy for them as possible just mm-hmm. to get into the word. And so yeah. I like an app called uh, Bible Audio okay. because it has it. They have dramatized versions, which just means that yeah. it's like you're you're listening in on a conversation. So they have an actor mm-hmm. for Jesus doing the voice of Jesus mm-hmm. and for the disciples. And, you know, you can hear like birds and yeah. the sound of them walking on the path. And cool. it's just a really cool way to listen to the Bible mm-hmm. on your way into work. Or mm-hmm. um, if you're just having trouble getting to the word, it can suck you into the, the scriptures really quickly. That's great. Yeah, that's I, cool. I, I, you know, I, I, I was, we were joking earlier about running. <laughs> and uh, there there was a time in my life when we lived overseas where I did run. I never, ever enjoyed it, <laughs> I, just to be honest. You know, I, people would ask me, they'd hear that they knew that I ran, and they would say, oh, you enjoy running. And I'd say, no. <laughs> but I enjoyed having run. Mm, the feeling. Yes. Have, mm-hmm. When I was done, I enjoyed the fact that I did it. Mm-hmm. and didn't enjoy it while I was doing it necessarily. Mm-hmm. But th- mm-hmm. going back to your comment, Evan, I don't know if you've ever heard of these 
there's an app called Couch to 5K. Yeah. I haven't. No. I've seen that. It, it, and they have another one called Couch to 10K. And the yeah. whole idea is to take somebody who doesn't run at all. So they're on the couch, they're a couch yeah. potato. Mm-hmm. And tell how do they get up to being able to run a the 10K? Five, a 10K. You mm-hmm. know, 5K or 10K. And the idea is they start with like you run for, you know, you walk, you warm up with a 30 minute, I mean, with a two minute walk. And then you run for 90 seconds. Okay. And then yeah. you walk for a minute. Yeah. And then you run for 90 seconds and then you walk for a minute. And the, idea, the whole idea is you're building up stamina. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I actually think there's value in that approach, even as we think about our spiritual disciplines. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's good. Because what we're doing is we're building our spiritual muscles. Mm-hmm. And I love the fact that, you know, Evan, you talk about trying to help young people with this. You know, going back, kind of we're coming close to the end of our time together. Going back to the that early quote from Emerson, mm-hmm. you know, I'm going to read it one more time. So a thought reap an action. So an action reap a habit. So a habit reap a character. So a character reap a destiny. Mm-hmm. You know, it's we are the sum total of our daily decisions. Yeah, yeah. That's who we become. You know, nobody. You look at somebody when they're 60 years old and they're strong and they're disciplined and they've got a lot of stuff going for them. That didn't happen overnight. Right. That mm-hmm. happened because years of accumulated discipline. And then you see the guy or gal, but whatever, who's at a certain age and, you know, everything in their life is a wreck. Mm-hmm. And you also realize that didn't happen overnight either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a sum total mm-hmm. of our daily decisions. Yeah. And so, Brittany, any last thoughts while we're here? Um, Something that I learned um, was I think that whatever you sow in your teens, you reap in your 20s. Mm. Whatever you sow in your 20s, you reap in your 30s. So while these everyday decisions, we might not see what's happening behind the scenes. We might not see what the Lord's doing, but we're planting seeds so that in our next decade of life, we'll see that. Maybe yeah. maybe it works in years, you know, but I believe that like I've seen it, you know, I've seen people who consecrated their teen years. They were following the Lord. They were choosing the Lord. And then now in their 20s, they're, they're doing so great. Mm, they're yeah. thriving and I think that is because of the discipline that they chose. Like, I believe that it's it's a choice. It's like, oh, Lord, please give me the desire to get up early and read my Bible every day. It's like, no, I need to get up and read my Bible every day. Yeah, mm-hmm. Which so. may mean going to bed <laughs> earlier. earlier. Yeah. yeah, it's a ripple Not effect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, forming that habit yep. of, you know, because by, by temperament, I am an, a night owl. I am an artist by nature. I, I don't have any artistic skills, but I have an artistic heart <laughs> and mind. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I love music. I love, you know, I, I, I could stay up till three o'clock in the morning easily and sleep all day. Mm-hmm. But I am an I'm an early morning person by choice. By choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not because and, and the whole point there being is I don't think we actually have to be a slave to our temperaments. Mm-hmm. Now, I. You know, I'm not I understand that there are people who like maybe I've met people who said that their their most rich times with God's word and in prayer were actually at the end of the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I don't think that I I don't invalidate that. My only and maybe we close with this. Maybe this is just my bent. Maybe I'm the old codger in the room here. (laughs) Uh, Well, I am the old codger in the room. There's no question about that. But I'm not sure if this is just age related. Um, (laughs) I would argue that it's fine to say your best time is in the evening. But for me, I think there's still an importance of starting the day right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it has to be your Mm -hmm. most significant time Mm -hmm. in God's word. But for me, anyway, if I don't do that, I find my 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 day sort of like a day that's being driven by the wind instead of by the rudder. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, That's, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You know, if you just wake up and start going about your day, but no, if you are intentional to start your day with something good, just a prayer, uh, a a few verses that, that sets you in the right course. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I I won't, I quote, I want something from both of you real quick here. We're wrapping up your mid thirties, late late twenties, if you could go back to your 
16 year old self that, you know, and, um, that wants to please God. Mm. Mm. What would you say to them as it relates to this topic of spiritual disciplines? Okay, well, this is very cliche, but it's so true to my personality. There's a reason why cliches are are cliches, are cliches because, because there's, there's truth. truth in them. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. I agree 100%. <laughs> yeah. So this is very true. Um, keep it simple. Mm. If, if I'm just talking to my own personality, mm-hmm. I have the tendency for perfectionism and mm. look at what this person did, but keep it simple because mm. just showing up to be in God's presence mm. is enough. Mm. Just mm. give him your heart is what I would say. Mm. Mm-hmm. Just give him your heart and God will... We'll do the rest. <clears throat> Great. Yeah, I would say um, two things. I know you said one thing, but two things. There's um, grace here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's truth and grace. Truth and grace. Yes, exactly. That's my middle no, name. <laughs> and our joke is that John's truth and I'm grace. So <laughs> truth is absent today. <laughs> true. <laughs> it's all grace. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, uh, I would say one consistency, hmm. just, just a little bit every day is consistency, yeah. you know? And then the second thing is um, don't compare yourself. Don't compare the way your quiet time looks to some, how someone else's looks. Sometimes I'd go to youth group and I'd be like, man, she prays way better than I do. Mm-hmm. Or she she has all these eloquent words. But don't compare yourself because yeah. the Lord still sees you right where you're at. And he's still proud of you and he still loves you. Mm-hmm. So that's what I would tell my yeah. 16-year-old Brit. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Guys, thank you for joining me today. Yeah, uh, it was this fun. Has been fun. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed fun. it. I certainly have. <laughs> I have. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, join us again next week when uh, Evan and I are going to continue having a conversation. But next week's topic will actually be about the subject of deconstruction and how many young people are deconstructing their faith. And we want to talk about that really important topic. And so uh, John's traveling. He's uh, on the road, actually overseas doing ministry. And so uh, I'm glad I've got some guests that join us at the table today. Uh, so join us next week. In the meantime, we ask that you would download the episode, watch it, listen to it, whatever your favorite uh, vehicle is for consuming content. Leave comments, like, share, because we want to be able to get this meaningful content out to more people. In the meantime, join us next time and have a great week. Thanks so much for joining us. We know your time is valuable and we're so thankful you chose to spend it with us. If you enjoy listening to John and Mark, you could see both of them in person at the Fire in Our Bones conferences. Their heart is to see your passion for God and your calling rekindled. Check out worldchallenge.org or the show notes for more details. John and Mark will be back next week to offer their insight into how believers can live, love, and lead well in a broken world. We'll see you next time.